Welcome back to the Financial Freedom Show. My name is Rob Berger. In today's show, we're going to answer a question that a friend of my wife's actually asked recently in Facebook, and that was, how do you go about investing $1,000? Turns out it can be a bit tricky, but the good news is there are great ways to do it for very little in cost. Before we get to that, though, I want to thank folks for supporting my book, Retire Before Mom and Dad. I launched it, or I guess published it, what, a little over a year ago, August of 2019. Sales have been phenomenal. We're now, of course, in December 2020, and this has been one of the best months ever, I think. I think folks are buying it as a gift. Probably a lot of parents buying it for their children, I'm not sure. But I want to thank you. If you've read it, it'd be great if you'd leave a review on Amazon. The, the reviews have been fantastic. Of course, there are some that don't like it. I get it. But uh, overall, it's about a 4.7 or 4.8 out of 5, somewhere around there. So very grateful for all of the support. All right, enough about that. Let's talk about how to invest $1,000. And the first thing I want to point out uh, before we sort of dive into the different ways to do it is that there are a couple of things that we need to cover before we do that. The first is paying off any high interest debt. If you have particularly credit cards at double digit interest rates, I think that should be your top priority. I wouldn't worry about low interest debt like federal student loans or perhaps a car loan that's you know three or four or five percent. I know there are folks out there that say you should pay off all of your debt before you start investing. Personally, I can't think of worse advice. Okay, well, that's not true. I could come up with worse uh, financial advice, but still, that one's pretty bad. However, if you have double digit interest rates on credit cards, you want to deal with that. Uh, one way, of course, is to transfer it to a 0% balance transfer credit card, something I did back in the day to get out of debt. So that's one option. But if it's not available to you, really, you ought to focus on that first. I've got a debt payoff calculator that you see here. I will leave a link to it in the descriptions, uh, the description below. So that's that's the first thing. The second thing is that for many folks, the best option is your 401k or uh, other workplace retirement account. Now, uh, that's particularly true if your 401k, could be a 403b, pays matching contributions. That really should be a priority to max out enough of the contributions to take full advantage of those matching contributions. Now, the third thing to keep in mind is we're talking about investing for relatively long periods of time. I would say at a minimum five years and frankly, 10 years or longer is, is ideal when you start to invest in things like stocks uh, and, and real estate. If you need money in the shorter term, then maybe one of the better options is simply an online savings account. The rates aren't great, but it's FDIC and you're not going to, excuse me, FDIC insured, and you're not going to lose uh, any money. I think one of my probably preferred options is CIT Bank. Again, it's FDIC insured. It's an online bank. You can see their money market account right now pays 50 basis points, well, one half of 1%. Now, again, uh, historically, that, that's a terrible interest rate. But of course, as we all know, interest rates are extremely low. CIT Bank tends to pay one of the highest rates currently available. The other nice thing is if rates start to rise, maybe I should say when, because eventually they're going to go up, the rates on, on something like a money market account will go up too. You're not locked in for any period of time. You can take your money out anytime you want. And again, if rates go up, the rates on an account like CIT Bank's money market account will go up as well. Okay, so with that, let's walk through uh, some, some ways where you can invest $1,000. And I want to actually begin with an option that's called Betterment. And, and here's the deal. You know, I've talked a lot about mutual funds and exchange traded funds on this channel, and they are, uh, I think, probably ideal ways to invest. But particularly with mutual funds, there is one hurdle, and that is the minimum investment required uh, to buy into a mutual fund. You all know I love Vanguard, but most of their funds have a $3,000 minimum. That doesn't really help us when we've got a thousand bucks to invest. I like Betterment. In fact, I met the founder, John Stein, back in, I want to say 2011, I think, at a, at a conference and uh, have followed Betterment since then. I've had accounts with Betterment to try it out. And what it does is it kind of takes, they use ETFs, uh, but they take all of these different types of investments, large cap U.S. stocks, small company stocks, international stocks, and, and bonds as well, and they wrap it together. So all you have to do is put your money into Betterment, and they will take all of the, take your money and, and invest it in the various, uh, they use exchange-traded funds, 
for you and you get to decide how much is gonna go in stocks and how much is gonna go in bonds. The great thing is if you're new to investing and you're not quite sure how much should go in each, they actually walk you through a series of questions that will help you make that decision. And of course you can change it anytime. Now you can see on their website and I encourage you uh, to check it out. I'll leave links in the description. Uh, a, a robust FAQ section. What I can tell you is there are no minimums and uh, the fees are relatively low. You can actually see down here, uh, their fees for their investment account, and I'll highlight it right here, are 25 basis points or 0.25 uh, of 1%, a quarter of 1%. And then the underlying ETFs also have fees, but again, these are low cost exchange traded funds. Uh, some, as you can see here, as, as inexpensive as three basis points. So what you get in exchange for that 25 basis points is a very easy way to invest. You put your money in one account. They divide it up for you. I can tell you their interface, both on the website and the mobile app, is incredibly easy to use. You can save for retirement. You can just save for maybe to buy a home down the road. Uh, uh, so I really like Betterment. I think it's a, a great a great option. Now, another option along the same lines as Betterment is what, what are called E-Trade Core Portfolios. In effect, it's kind of the same thing. So why do I mention it? Well, some of you, for whatever reason, you might want sort of a, a better known brokerage uh, company. E-Trade obviously is a very well-known uh, broker and you just, I don't know, you might feel more comfortable or you just wanna check out your options. You can see here at the top of the screen, uh, it, there is a $500 minimum, but again, if you've got a thousand bucks to invest, not a problem. And they effectively do the exact same thing that Betterment does. Now, in terms of cost, we can check that out here. Uh, it is 0.30%. So I guess it's five basis points more than Betterment. Uh, I believe in keeping expenses as low as possible. So I have to give Betterment the nod on this one, but it's not a, a, a huge difference. And it's another option for you if you're looking for a very easy way to invest thousand bucks that gets diversified across a number of, uh, of exchange traded funds in a very easy and simple uh, way. Now, some of you may want to actually invest in individual stocks. And of course, that's easy to do. There are countless brokers out there. Many of them now don't charge any transaction fees. The one that I kind of like and I've used in the past is M1 Finance. And it's one of the sort of new investing apps and it's extremely easy to use. And But to show you why I like it, I wanna actually log in to my M1 Finance account. So here's my account. As you can see, the current uh, balance is zero. I tried it out and used it for a couple of months just to kind of get a feel for how it works. Really liked it a lot. I'm just, I'm, I'm an old fogey, so I just stick with Vanguard and Fidelity, but really enjoyed using M1 Finance. The thing I wanna show you is down here, uh, this is a, they call them pies. So you can create a pie, uh, an investing pie, uh, that includes more than one company. So each company they kind of describe as a slice, right? So my pie has three slices. You can see they're all banks. I was creating a, a financial institutions pie. But here's what I like about it. If I wanted to invest in this pie, uh, I could just contribute to it. You can see over here how it would get divided. 34% would go to Wells Fargo, 33% to JP Morgan Chase and 33% to PNC, and it does it automatically for you. So you can create your own pie with multiple stocks. Maybe you love Apple or Bank of America or Berkshire Hathaway. By the way, all three stocks that I that I own, full disclosure, or you know, maybe you're a Tesla fan. But the point is, you can. it's almost like creating your own mutual fund. You can put the stocks in that you want, and then to invest in them, you just make a, a de deposit into uh, M1 Finance, invest it into that pie, and they will divide it up for you based on the percentages that you set. So I really like M1 Finance. I found the interface very easy uh, to use. Transferring money into M1 Finance and getting my money out was extremely easy. So I think this is a good option for those uh, looking to invest in individual stocks. Now, some of you have probably heard of Robinhood, so we should mention that. And here's Robinhood. I also opened up an account there to try it out. Uh, one of the great things about Robinhood, as with M1 Finance, is that uh, you can trade stocks for free. I should warn you, though, Robinhood does a lot, in my view, to encourage certain types of, uh, I'll call it, quote unquote, investing uh, that I think can be very dangerous. That includes buying and selling options, 
buying and selling cryptocurrencies, buying and selling commodities, and probably the, the worst of all of them, buying on margin, that is borrowing money to invest. So you really wanna be careful using Robinhood. I think those strategies are a good way to lose a lot of money. But if you avoid those, you just wanna invest in individual stocks, I think Robinhood is a good option as well. So the next thing I wanna look at is investing in real estate. Believe it or not, you can invest in real estate even with just $1,000. Probably the simplest way is in what's called a REIT, R-E-I-T, stands for Real Estate Investment Trust. And you can think of a, of a, a REIT as uh, almost like a mutual fund. In fact, there are index REITs that track a whole number, a large number of, of REITs. Again, the problem though is you've got to deal with minimum investments like we talked before. So one approach is to use a service like Wealthfront. Now Wealthfront is very similar to Betterment, very similar to E-Trade Core portfolios. I've used Wealthfront before. Back in the day, I had a SEP IRA here and uh, it's very inexpensive. But the thing that they do that Betterment does not is they give you direct exposure into a REIT ETF. So they, they, again, they can diversify your, mo your money, U.S. companies, foreign companies, large, small, bonds as well. But they also uh, give you exposure uh, to REITs. Wealthfront is, a, I think, a good way to get some exposure uh, to real estate. Now, you may say, well, yeah, that's great, but you want more exposure to real estate. Well, you could invest directly in, in a REIT. And one of the ones that I like, I don't invest in at least not directly, but it's called Realty Income. Its ticker is really easy to remember. It's it's O, oh, just a, a one a one letter ticker. You can see it here. It's currently trading at about $60.65. One of the things that it's sort of known for, you can see at the top left, it's called the Monthly Dividend Company. They've paid a monthly dividend for 604 consecutive months. Now, uh, that's pretty impressive. Now, again, it's not uncommon for REITs to, to do that. I don't know that any of them have that kind of track record. But the one thing I'll caution is that REITs generally you want to own in a retirement account. So if you're going to go this route, you'd really want to hold it, I think, inside, say, an IRA, for example. But realty income is an option. And then another option is a company called Fundrise. And there are actually a number of companies that are very similar to Fundrise. This is just one of them. But it allows you to sort of get a direct investment right into a real estate. And as you can see from the screen, you can get started with a minimum investment of just a thousand bucks and you'll get direct investment into a real estate. One thing to keep in mind with these sorts of companies, the fees are on the higher side. I think when you add up the fees on Fundrise, it comes to about 1%. So you want to keep that in mind. If we look at their historical performance, though, you know, it's been reasonably good and at least over the last five or six years. So Fundrise is uh, another option if you're really interested in investing in real estate. Now, one last option I want to give you is what are called target date retirement funds. We've talked about those in the past. What you're looking at on the screen just happens to be Vanguard's target date retirement funds. But um, I think most of the major mutual fund companies and 401k companies offer a target date retirement fund. They're, they're similar to something like a Betterment or a Wealthfront in that you invest your money into a single mutual fund. The mutual fund then takes your money and invests it in U.S. stocks, international stocks, and bonds. They are a little different, though, because as you near retirement, the allocation between stocks and bonds will change, though it'll gradually move away from stocks and toward bonds. And in fact, as you can see here, you pick the target date retirement fund based on approximately what year you expect to retire. And you can see a number of different examples here. So if you're um, looking to retire in about, uh, let's say, 2050, you'd pick this fund here. As you can see, it's called the Vanguard Target Retirement 2050 Fund. So the idea is if you expect to retire in or around 2050. I know that's a long time away, but why not plan? Uh, this could be a good fund for you. The one thing I'll caution about target date retirement funds is that they can be on the expensive side. Now, as you can see here, Vanguard's fund is only 15 basis points. That's a really good fee. Uh, I think uh, others tend to be higher. I've seen them as high as 75 basis points or even more expensive. So you want to keep an eye on on the fees, but this would be a good option if you're saving for retirement. You've got $1,000 to start with, 
Again, this could be an, a, a decent option inside an IRA or potentially inside a 401k. Now, before we end this video, I want to cover something a little different, and that is how not to invest $1,000. When you look at articles on the internet about how to invest relatively small amounts of money, uh, they'll often tell you ways to do it, but there are actually some ways you should avoid. And in fact, in some cases, I find these as listed as ways you should invest $1,000. So I'm going to give you, I think, about four ways I really don't think you should invest $1,000. The first one is what's called day trading, you know, where you're buying and selling uh, the same stock basically on the same day. Many day traders close out all their positions before the close of the market. Uh, the reality is in study after study after study shows this, day traders long term do not make money. You know, if you want to have a little bit of fun day trading with a relatively small amount of money, that might be okay. Although when we're talking about investing $1,000, day trading is not the answer. Uh, the second thing, options. You shouldn't be buying or selling calls or puts as a way uh, to make money. Again, I know it's sort of the sexy thing to do and there's a lot of websites that like to try to sell you or, or promote complex trading strategies. But again, study after study after study shows that long term, uh, folks buying and selling calls and puts to make money don't. Uh, and it's a mess for, with taxes. I just I wouldn't bother with it. I don't think it's a great way uh, to build wealth. The next one, and I know this is going to be controversial, Bitcoin, right, and cryptos. Uh, I know that they're all the rage right now because they're up so much, but the problem is they have no intrinsic value and they are subject to wild swings. And again, will you, do you know, can you find people that have made a fortune with crypto? Sure, but you can also find a, a people that have made a fortune with the lottery. I don't think it's a good way uh, to build long-term wealth. And the last last one are commodities. So think here like uh, you know gold and silver, for example. Um, I've owned some silver in the past, a long time ago. Funny story, I was driving up the New Jersey Turnpike. I was in college and I was in a Monte Carlo. I think it was, no, it was a Cutlass Supreme. And uh, I'm doing like 80, like everyone else. And I go flying by a cop in the middle of, you know, in the median and he, we make eye contact. Like I'm, he's sitting there, I'm doing 80. Eye contact, not a good thing. He pulls me over. You know, he looks at me. I'm maybe 20. He goes, "What do you have under your car seat?" Now I'm not. I'm from Ohio. What do I know? He's obviously looking for drugs. I don't know what he's doing. I, I pause and I, well, officer, I have three 100 ounce bars of silver. <laughs> he looks at me. He goes, "Do you mind if I look?" I said, "No, hell, not not a problem. Help, knock yourself out." I get out of my car. Cars are just flying by us on the turnpike. He gets on his hands and knees. Pulls out three 100 ounce bars of silver. He looks at me, shakes his head, gives me a warning, lets me go. I didn't make any money on that silver. I will tell you that. By and large, commodities, not a great way to build wealth. So there you go. Those are both how I would invest $1,000 if that was what I was going to do and how I wouldn't invest $1,000. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I'll do my best to help you out. And until next time, remember, the best thing money can buy is financial freedom.